Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're going to be diving into a mana and artifice. So, I hope you join with me on this uh, crazy learning journey. So, I hope you guys are ready. So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit special. We're going to be diving into a mod that I know nothing about. I absolutely don't have a clue what this mod is about. I do, however, know that it is based off of Ars Magica, I do believe. And... Uh, Funny thing is, is I I actually never got to play with that mod either. Um, so I'm gonna be pretty blind to this mod. It is a magic mod, and it is uh it is called Mana and Artifice. So I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna show you guys how to get started with this mod, um, as it does require a little bit of setup, also some villagers. So that's kind of the whole reason why I started working on villagers in the first place. But let's go ahead and get this set up. Let's uh let's make this thing. We are gonna need a rune forge. And we're gonna need some runes. Um, so regular runes, we're gonna need at least three of them to kind of get started here. I think blue ones are probably gonna be one of the easiest to make. There we go. And throw those in, and we have three runes, and then we can make ourselves a rune forge. Um, the rune forge is gonna be kind of interesting because it's gonna be used for our villagers. Um, let's grab some dark. Uh, let's just grab some. Uh, let's see, dark oak. That should work. We're gonna make a little bit of a villager stall. I don't know if this will actually work with like the villager trading thing. Um, we'll find out. Uh, let's see, villager, or actually trading, a trader. Let's see if we can uh, get this to work with the trader. I don't know. Um, it might. We can try and put it inside here. Will this stone go in here? It does. Okay, so with that in there, uh, let's put a villager in and it should automatically adjust and look at that. Now, normally, of course, you would have to go out about the normal fashion. Look at there. Now, you're going to notice we uh, are going to be going towards this Codex Arcana. Uh, this thing is what we need to learn the entire mod, basically. Ooh, we can uh, cycle through here and get a lower amount. Looks like five is pretty good. Five is a pretty low number so far. I'm going to stick with five for the Ventium. Um, now, to get Ventium, it's not super easy. Um, we do have to go through a couple of steps in order to get this, but we do have the material because we are in a sky block. Um, so, Ventium Dust is what we've been getting. Now, normally, I believe you would mine up Ventium Ore, and then you'd get Ventium Dust, and then you combine, combine that Ventium Dust with uh, Iron. So, Ventium Dust with some iron and that will get us some Ventium coated ingots. I don't know if Ventium coated ingots have a use in their self. No, just to be smelted. So we just smelt this up and we're gonna get ourselves some regular Ventium ingots. And uh, we're pretty much getting started with mana and artifice, right? Um, this is gonna be a really cool magic wand. I'm kind of, I've seen some of the rituals and stuff that you can do with this. It's, there's some really cool things that are available. And I'm gonna learn about them once I get this book unlocked. Oh my goodness. So we now have the book. We open this. Ooh, notice we have a bar up in the top uh, left. And uh, basically we've, us opening this book, um, it says, as you hold the book in your hands, you feel com uh, compelled to open it. Your, uh, it says you skim through a, f a few pages and before you know it, hours have gone by. I think if you uh, read this, I thought that it would take you into the night, or maybe it takes night to day. It does one of those, or it brings you into the next day. Um, it says, your mind has been open, and you feel the currents of magical energies swirling around you. You have unlocked the secrets of Ar Arcane. So now that we open this up, we see there's a lot of information here. Lots of pages, lots of stuff to look at. Um, so... Ritualist villagers, these villagers sell rune scribing recipes. I have noticed, by the way, I did have a traveling villager and it was selling something from this mod, so I probably should have bought it, but I unfortunately didn't get around to doing that. Um, but yeah, I believe there are other, so a rune scribing table. So ritual jobs block is the rune scribing table. You can find naturally. Okay, so rune scribing table is probably another villager that we want to get set up. So. Let's go ahead and grab the trader and rune scribing table. 
Okay, so we're going to need purified Ventium dust, which needs arcane ash. Okay, so this is going to require that arcane furnace. I guess the rune forge? It needs the rune forge, right? Oh my gosh, this is where we're going to be getting into everything. <laughs> um, maybe the rune scribing table it tells you a little bit about it. I'm going to do some reading. And I want to see how we get started in this mod. So this is kind of interesting. I did a little bit of reading about this block here. It kind of acts as a furnace. Um, and I placed some bone in here because I noticed some of the recipes, like for this table, for example, um, requires bone ash. But I didn't even, I should have taken it even further because um, the purified Ventium dust requires arcane ash and arcane ash requires arcane compound. And that also requires this. Now, notice... These flowers for mana and artifice, you're going to need those, I believe, in particular. And here's some of the stuff that we have for mana and artifice so far. So we do have these flowers. Um, and I believe I was getting them from my mob farm. But I think they're also farmable via the sieves as well. Um, so how do you get these? Oh, it looks like we can make seeds of them as well. So that's pretty cool. By the way, the more items you put in here, I think I put uh, 16 bone in here, which is what it can hold max. It's going to multiply the original cook time by the amount of bones that you put in. So it's probably going to take a little bit before this is done. So taking a look at this mod, by the way, if things start getting in your way with JEI, I believe you can hold control and hit O to remove the JEI so it's out of your way. Um, but I'm noticing this right here. I was reading it said we are going to need the Oculus in order to progress through this mod. Um, so not crazy. To get this, let's see, control O. Well, I guess we're with our normal inventory open. Um, and mana and Oculus. It's pretty simple to make this thing. But apparently this is going to be needed to help us progress through the mod. Interesting. There's a lot of a lot of information here. A lot. So um, it says tier one. Complete eight of the ten tasks to advance to the next tier. Cast a cantrip, um, cast a spell, complete a ritual, okay, craft a mana weaver wand and a mana weaver altar. Uh, I believe the mana weaver altar we will do need because there are three types of villagers. Um, we're going to be making one off the table and also one for the mana weaver. Um, craft a spell with a complexity of 15 or more, craft an inscription table, which is, I believe, what we're working on. No, we're not working. That's a different table. Okay, so, and then uh, reach magic level 15. We have a lot of work ahead of us. Oh boy. And this book has a lot to tell us. By the way, the forge is done and we now have bone ash and it looks like 16 gave us a 64, which is kind of nice. So that means we should be able to make all of this. So I can take the compound and we're gonna throw the compound in here. I'm gonna let that work, it's magic. While I'm doing that, I should be able to craft this, which is chalk. Um, it does say there's 50 uses remaining, so we might have to make another one of these later on. But this is used all for this table right here, which is going to also have it's going to have a use, but we're also going to use it for villagers as well. We'll leave them to set up um, some nice little trading areas for these guys. Let's see. I might place one here and then have another one over there and vice versa. That way we have all of our stuff kind of sitting here. So now that we have the arcane ash, we need to purify it using one of the flowers. We get three out of that, which is kind of nice. And then we can make a rune scribing table. Perfect. So rune scribing table done. We'll place that in there. As you can see, it does work for a villager. And we now have a villager in here. And it looks like this is an axe, a rod. We can roll, the, we can roll these. Mundane ring, arcane... Earth, torso, aura, arcane, warding, ender. I don't know if any of these matter. Um, ritual, metal, warding, arcane, ring, earth. I mean, all of these are going to be fine. I, I these are just rune scribing recipes though. So after doing some reading, I am going to need a mana weaver's wand. Now this apparently, um, we pattern wasn't recognized. We need some patterns. 
Um, so over here, I believe, is how we make patterns. I'm kind of diving through this and trying my best to understand it. So mana weaving here. Um, let's see. I don't know if it talks about patterns. Combining patterns. When drawing mana weaving patterns, there's no moving altar ritual nearby. So yeah, we're gonna have to. I have to figure out how to get the uh, the patterns. So it looks like I'm also gonna need a mana weaving table. So I have almost all of this. I'm trying to get all of the blocks I guess I'm going to need. This is a mana weaving altar. That's kind of cool looking. Okay. We can't use this on here. I also pulled our villager out of here um, for right now because this table also has some uses. Notice uh, the mana weaver wand is complete. The mana weaver altar is complete. And there's some other stuff we have to do. Craft an inscription table and several other things. Okay, so this is, a, I, I was kind of messing around with this reading a bit more and noticed that this wand right here, we have these shapes available. So I can actually make a circle here. Like that. And... Okay, so that acted like a square, but... I guess you could do multiple patterns. Right, and then that would work, <laughs> I think. Um, I believe I need, don't I need to throw something at this for it to work? So it says in the book that you just draw them. Does your lack of knowledge and skill to perform this pattern. Can we do the square? Triangle? Circle. They pulled it up earlier. So there's a square. And it disappears. Huh. So if you're diving a little bit further into this, um, I think I'm going to go with rituals first. It just seems like uh, that's where we need to go. Um, and I was looking through the different rituals that we could do, and this one seems to be like one of the only ones that we can do, and it does need to be nighttime in order for us to do that. These other ones re require things that we just don't have at the moment, um, and I think we're going to have to get them later on or figure out how to get them later on. Uh, the rituals, however, like I said, we can do the ritual of, of Aurora. This ritual will turn night into day and can only be performed at night. Um, and this is going to be a chalk. It's a three by three. It's going to require some wool. So two pieces of wool and the chalk, the ritual chalk from mana and artifice. Okay, we're missing paper. Perfect. Okay, so this is all we need uh, is this right here. Now, it can only be completed at night, it says. Um, and we do need a place to sort of start this. I guess we can do it here, right? So, uh, from the book, it shows like a, just an X pattern. So like this, and then it gets wool on here and here. Problem is, is it, it can only be done at night. And then we also need, um, let's see, mana. We need the purification powder, I believe. This stuff, the purified Ventium. Uh, but it does need to be nighttime, which... It's, it's getting close. So if you're waiting a bit for night to show up, I believe we're ready to go. We just click that on there. Actually. It is uh, wanting us to place the items. I guess these are the reagents. And there we go. Oh, that's kind of cool. What? Uh, oh, wow, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> what a weird effect. Okay, so that was our first ritual, right? We just completed a ritual. Very cool. So I'm definitely learning as I go. Right here is the leather. Um, I'm going to need to put this into some water, I believe. So like right over here, we right click this on the water and we're going to get ourselves some vellum. And I'm going to make a little bit of that. There we go, we have plenty of leather. Throw that in there. I have all our vellum ready to go. This thing is a little bit different um, as you need these in order for you to pretty much make anything, but I was kind of looking at the different stuff. 
I think like um self and then fling is going to be a pretty cool thing to have. So I'm slowly starting to understand this more and more. Um, over here, we are gonna start working on casting this spell. Now that I have all this stuff in here, we don't need these reagent items yet. This will be used when we craft another ritual. Um, but we can go ahead and use some of these items up here to craft this particular spell, which is a self and then a fling. So hopefully that does what I think is gonna do and like flings us in the air, allows us to move quickly. That'll be kind of fun. Um, so I want to get this done. That is going to print it off and we should get ourself a self fling recipe. Now inside of our book, I was looking at the rituals and one of those rituals did require one of those items. And uh, if we go here under rituals and it was rituals, I believe of Arcana right here. And you can see this ritual in particular, which I can pin over here, by the way, um, and then when I close out, I can actively see that over in the left. I know my uh, my uh, GUI thing for the uh, jetpack is over there, but um, we should be able to put the uh, ritual here. I think this will be a good place for this ritual. Um, and I also need to know what the reagents are going to be. Now, when we get this place down, it will show us what the reagents need to be. Let's go ahead and do this. This is made on a nine by nine area. And then we have a little thing that goes like this. A nice little pattern that's going on. Looks like another section here. Another two there, two there, two there. I probably should have like uh, some darker material here to make it a little easier to see, but this is how it goes. Like that and like this. Okay, so with that, I believe I need to use the uh, pure Ventium dust. And that is going to ask for the spell. Okay, and then it's gonna show me all the items that I'm going to need. Um, and these different runes and things like that. So let me go ahead and pop open our book here to remove that, that pin. We don't have that in our way. And try our best to see what these are. Um, I believe with the mana, you can kind of see the different letters. So these are white glyphs. It looks like there's a white glyph there. Um, I do have the focus. So that's a mana focus. And then this is the runesmith hammer that goes there. Um, this is just a book. It's a regular book. I don't know how many of those we're going to need, but a book there. Um, this is a mana flower. It is a aum, a, a, a yum, something like that. Armor stand, very interesting. I wonder if that's something to do with like self. Oh, we need an, another focus. What does it say? Did you know you can right click these runes on it with an empty hand and they will pull items? Huh. Okay, the, so I guess if you click on the runes, they'll auto pull the item for you. Interesting. So runes, for example, um, or at, let's go back to mana because we do have to make another one of these focuses. Foci. <laughs> there we go. And we have that done. Okay. And then we need over here, I believe it's Ventium. Ventium dust is what it seems like. Ventium dust. And then I'm going to need one, two, three white runes. Okay. Runes and actually, are they called runes? Glyphs, not runes, glyphs. Okay, so we've, we've almost got this done. Just need three of them. Perfect. And it did say you can click with a right with your, maybe not. Huh. Thought it said you can click with an empty hand and it'll work. Okay. I think this is everything. So once we have everything placed down, I believe we hit it again with the purification powder. Right. 
I am so confused now. <laughs> um, okay, so it's it's back activated. Am I missing something? So we should be able to check. This right here is still floating in the air. Oh, this is a different rune. Okay. Okay, so this is actually the wrong item. This is a opposite. What kind of what kind of glyph is that? Not rune. Why do I keep calling them runes? I keep calling them runes. Um, it's this thing. Is it the gray? It is. It's a gray glyph. Okay, that's what I was missing. Is gray. So let's take some uh, black dye, mix that, get the gray. We'll take this, combine that there, and we have ourselves a gray glyph. Perfect. Okay, so now. It should work. Aha. Okay. So, I was reading, and uh, this is where things get a little interesting. We need to project with the mana, mana weaving rod. What mana weaving wand? This is where the mana weaving really starts to show up. I'm going to make a circle. Okay. So, it, it accepted my circle. Let's make another circle. Perfect. Let's make a triangle. And voila. We have ourselves a spell self fling. So now that we have this uh, spell, you can see I have these particle effects that are following me. Well, I guess I can uh, call it fling. I guess I can name it. So fling. And then we can choose an image for it. These are kind of cool looking. We need something that's kind of like a gust of wind. Hmm. Not a tornado. Maybe like a gust of wind or something. I don't know. Hmm. What would be a good image for this? Ooh, this right here is a good one. Fling. Okay. And we use it. Ooh. Hey, we just leveled up to level two. Now, I was looking in the book. And this is pretty uh, pretty weird, but um, I've been trying to find this. I don't know if it's just because the, the mod itself is kind of still being worked on updating, but cantrips. I, I cannot do cantrips. I, I've been looking, and it even tells you right here, you can use the cantrip book to set the pattern for the combinations. There is no cantrip book. Um, even, even if you search cantrip from the mod, there's there's nothing. Um, there's no book. Like none of the things on the sides like show a book. So I don't know how to do cantrips. Like they're just not there. Either way, though, like we still have fling, and we can like fling ourselves around. Notice I went up to level two, and we have to complete at least eight of the eight of those things. By the way, we got these things spawning up here i don't mind them spawning though because we do need their their stuff after a while but anyways um so we should be able to at least complete eight of them which will get us to the next step so the cantrips not a horrible thing that we can't complete but kind of kind of sad that we i, I can't show that because it's kind of cool so in order for us to complete the eight out of ten task which crafting something in a mana weaving altar and use the cantrip would have been on the same thing unfortunately that's one of the things that you know, we couldn't complete, but uh, since we can use fling now, we might as well start this up. By the way, look how cool that looks in your hand. Kind of cool, those particles. Um, but yeah, if we level up, we should be able to level up to 15 just by using this a little bit. But we can also fling ourselves into the air. But keep in mind, yeah, we're probably going to take some damage. But as we work on leveling up, look at our mana. Our mana gen regens uh, every 60 seconds. So it'll completely fill up every 60 seconds. It also shows you in that bar, the darker blue section is the uh, the amount of mana that will be used when we cast it. And look at that. All I got to do is get up to level 15, which shouldn't take too long. And I don't know if the higher level we go, the quicker the mana regens. But it's not horrible right now. And every time we cast, that bar goes up pretty high. So the more I use this, the better I get at it. The affinity level's going up. And um, 
It also said it became rote. We're at ne level 10. And also every time we level this up, I notice that it's costing less to cast now. And the higher level we get, it looks like the quicker our mana regens. It's hard for me to tell if that's the case. I, I really think that is though. Yeah, every time we level this up, some things are changing. Like, and the higher our affinity goes on this, the better off this is as well. Look at that, we're already at 11. Oh yeah, it's getting much smaller to cast and our mana uh, storage is actually going up. So we are getting so close to being level 15 and there we are. You've gained enough experience to advance in tier. Check your Oculus to continue. All right, advance by resting at a bed and meditating on what you've learned. Interesting, okay, bed. Let's grab that, place it down and you can only sleep at night, but you've advanced to tier two. Okay. So tier two. Oh boy. Things start getting really advanced really quickly. Complete 11 of 14 tasks. Add a modifier to a spell using a ritual of alteration. Then add a tier two cantrip. We unfortunately can't do cantrips yet. I hope that's fixed later on. Um, craft a magic broom. Magic broom. Uh -huh. Ooh, what does that let you do? Interesting. It does require... Ooh, this is mana weaving. We might be able to actually make this. So this is a hay bell, a stick, and two ventium. Um, hay bell. Sticks. Um, stick and ventium. Just two ventium dust. And apparently we put that in here. And then we need to basically weave in our book. Um, let's see. I did. I must have thrown my book in here. Um, we need to basically combine those using two different uh, spells. Let's see. I don't know what the broom does because I haven't looked it up in the book. So circle and then this weird shape here that we use this for. So I just do a circle. And then I do this weird shape. Ooh. That's kind of cool. And what does the uh, broom do? I don't actually know. Um, let me see, broom? Magic broom, so the magic broom has been to collect all dropped items within a radius painter place turned. Huh. So apparently if you have a chest, right? And I place the broom on it and I start tossing items around it. It's supposed to pick up the items. Let's turn our magnet off. So let's try this again. Notice the broom is off of the thing. What? Oh, that's gotta be the coolest thing. <laughs> it's an actual broom that is picking things up. Does it not recognize there's items over there? On the back? Okay. Um. That is hilarious. So it's mostly picking up the items that are in the front. Maybe not doing 100% of the like, best job in the world, but yeah, that's funny. So of course, if anything, I can say that uh, my favorite thing so far has been the broom, uh, but I do want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video, because unfortunately we are just out of time. And uh, that is going to go to, let's go ahead and get that. DJ, DJ, JD, JD Gamer. <laughs> uh, there you go. Thank you so much for uh, being a Patreon. I really do appreciate you. Uh, more than you know. More than you know, definitely. And guys, if you're interested in becoming a Patreon yourself, of course, you can find that link down in the description below. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Of course, I was learning this whole time, so this episode took a lot longer than you actually seen. Let me just put it that way. When I'm learning mods, a lot of, a lot of time behind the camera. 
But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed. And of course, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge thumbs up. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.